Good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, TED people. Um, wonderful privilege to be here. Um, I've lived in Falmouth for 25 years, so I'm under no illusions that as I stand in front of you in a Chelsea Football Club work kit, that I'm probably talking to 250 rugby fans. <laughs> which, I, okay, that's all right, but let's have a little show of hands. I mean, I'm not going to be too ambitious here. Is anybody here totally ambivalent about Chelsea Football Club? I'd love to have you on my side. <laughs> Let's try another one. How many of you use smartphones for taking photographs? Whoa, now I'm connected to you all. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about photography and the wonder of photography and what it means to me. And I'm going to um, talk about photography in the sense that it's many different things. And so some people it's a way of showing the world. To some people, it's political activism. To me, the thing that really has always struck me about photography is it's basically its ability to capture the past. And the past is there for you to revisit whenever you like. And it all started for me. I can remember the actual moment it started. I was a young boy at home. And for some reason, my folks used to put newspaper as underlay between the carpet and the floorboards. And I picked up, I'm from that era, I guess, I'm from that age, I'm that old. And I picked up the corner of a carpet, and there was a newspaper cutting there, and there was a photograph that absolutely shocked me. Um, and it was this picture here. Now, this was very different from my sort of leafy rural upbringing in southwest London. Um, and in fact, of course, when you look back now, this is Pearl Harbor, and the Second World War was actually only 12 years, it finished 12 years before I was born, so nothing at all. But at the time, this was like a window on another world. And I remember the impact this photograph had on me as a person. And I think from that day onwards, I've always been a little bit in love with photography and a little bit in awe of photography as well and what it can do. So I'm going to show you some pictures today um, because this is, I, am a, I, am a, I can talk, but I'm a picture person. And I'm going to tell you a few little stories that we can share. And the first one... Um, this photograph here shows me sort of looming rather largely over my 93-year-old mother. And um, although it looks like I might be saying, well, where's all the money gone, Mum? <laughs> in, in, in a rather threatening way. Actually, this is a still from a video. I recorded my mum before she passed away. Um, just got some video recordings of her speaking. And as dear old lady, she had dementia at the time. It was mostly ramblings about my sisters and my sister and my brother. And uh, one day I'll have to show it to them. I can't show it to them yet. It's too personal. But the thing about my mum in this photograph at 93 years old is that when someone gets to that age, they, they actually change. They change quite a lot in their appearance and in who they are. And they're not necessarily the sort of person that you remember them to have been throughout your life. And in the case of my mum, you know, this is really who my mum is. This is a photograph taken by my dad when they were touring around the south of France um, sometime, I suppose, in the early 1950s, it would have been. So before I was born, but that's, the, that's my mum. And when she passed away, I thought, well, I don't want people to actually carry around an image of mum as she was at the end of her life. So I found a photograph and of her taken sort of around when I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I made it into badges. And everybody who was at the funeral wore this badge of my mum, including the vicar, the undertakers. And um, it was nice because it all helped us to remember who mum really was. And I think how she'd like to be remembered herself as well. And so that's a little story about the power of photography. Now, cutting on to the modern day, it's... Um, Something that I've come across quite a lot, it's like the next, every generation thinks they're the most important generation in the world. And that what went before is history and nostalgia, and you're soft if you're into that world. And it's not relevant to where we are and where we're going. And this is something that I downloaded from the internet. You can get lots of this on the internet. I've taken out the nasty expletive in there. Um, but this is, what, this is what you can find on T-shirts, on social media. There's this sort of hatred of the past. Now... 
I'm coming from the completely different direction. I suppose I will do. I'm 61 years old now. I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot to talk about. But I think that the past is absolutely essential to who we are and, our, and to our own futures as well. This is another photograph that I took. This is a photograph I took of a chap's wall in his home just before he passed away. And there's a little uh, message underneath it from the University of Southampton, which sort of sums up how I feel about photographs and how this person obviously feels about them as well, in that nostalgia is not a bad thing. You know, we need it. We need to be able to contact and connect with our own past to help us understand who we are today and, and what our journey's been like and where we might go from now. And this particular gentleman, he's the, who owned these photographs and owned the house, is the chap in the middle with the glasses. And he's got photographs of his children all around him, one of whom is quite a high achiever. And yet they're just prints on the wall. Can you, does anybody know who this person is, who's, whose wall this is? Does anybody recognise the athlete? So it's Sebastian Coe is the athlete. And this is Peter Coe, who was his dad and his coach. So I love the way that he's got these pictures in front of him throughout his life. And I've used it in my own life, in my own professional life. I, I was made the official photographer at Chelsea Football Club when I was only 20 years old. Um, the club had no money at the time. I think that's why I became the official photographer <laughs> at 20 years old, because I left school at 16, went straight into a photographic studio in the West End of London. Didn't go to college or anything. I wish I had, I, loved, I would love to have done college. Um, but they took me on. But with the photographs that I took when I worked for them full time for 10 years as a photographer, I kept them all. They were negatives and I kept them all in boxes in my shed. And then I revived them all. This is a photograph taken outside Chelsea Football Club's ground at Stamford Bridge in London. And it's me, photograph taken by my wife, credit Karen Hastings, this one. And, um, Behind me is all the photographs, some of the photographs that I've taken um, in historical times. And the reason the football club and I got together to start a thing called the Chelsea Archive, with all the pictures are available to the world's media through Getty, is because when Roman Abramovich built, bought Chelsea, we suddenly became a different animal. We became this rich, wealthy club. And then therefore, there was a disconnect to who we'd been in the past. And so we use photographs of who we used to be to show, this, if you like, the value of where we are now. And the club are completely bought into this, and I'm scanning photographs all the time. And this archive has photographs like this, happy moments in the lives of the Chelsea footballers. This is Joey Jones. I also made it a point to photograph um, things that took place away from the pitch. Now, this is taken on the team coach on the way home from Grimsby after we'd won the second division. And as you can see, I, th I think there's a fair bit of drink going around here. Um, there's a footballer biting another footballer's toe. <laughs> through, through his boot. <laughs> uh, but the bit that really concerns me, this coach is rush rattling along back down the A1 to London, is that if you look at the gentleman second on the right, he's got a little tag on his trouser belt. Well, that's the bus driver. <laughs> Football's really changed, I can tell you. <laughs> I also looked behind me, and these are fans at a football match in the 1980s. And not long after I took this, I decided actually 10 years of this was enough. Um, um, so I did come back to the club, obviously, but I left it for a short while because I was fed up with getting bottles and things thrown at my head because I was the only person who'd be photographed in the end. Chelsea would be attacking because we weren't very good. And so everybody knew who I worked for. <laughs> But the club uses the photographs that are in that archive very well. This is a magazine that we produce every now and again, every month rather, and it shows a photograph of pre-season training in 1984, which was in the uh, sand dunes of Aberystwyth, and the team stayed in the empty um, university accommodation. And now, of course, they go to Dubai, Sydney, fly all over the world. And I come from the world of film, so all the things that I photographed were taken on film. And the club, as I said, had no money. So if I was able to take 72 shots at a match, that was it. That was all I was allowed to take. If I took any more, 
And that's two rolls of film, 72. If I took any more, then I would have to buy the film and process it myself. And somewhere like Swansea, I'd only get 36 pictures because the light's so bad. Now we live in this world. This is a digital sensor. And the world has changed completely now because there's no limit to what we can take. And so my, co my colleague, Darren Walsh, at Chelsea Football Club now, takes regularly 1,500, 2,000 pictures of one game. In our own lives, digital photography means this, the smartphone, more than anything else. 85% of all the billions of extra pictures that are being taken around the world these days are taken on smartphones. And so the title of my talk is The Big Picture. And the big picture of the reality of photography now is that's what our computers look like. And I got an email last night from someone saying, does your iPhone look like it's drowning in pictures? Boy, does it look like it's drowning in pictures. What are we going to do? How are we going to protect all these important pictures we've got when we're taking so many? Now, I've got a theory that is like this. When a photograph is taken, we take it because we're quite interested in the subject. But very, very quickly, within a week, we're actually not that interested in that picture anymore because that's what we're like as human beings. And this is where the danger lies. And then there's a period that goes along where these photographs are probably going to get lost because we keep taking more pictures all the time, all the time. And so where are we going to save these shots? How are we going to find them? Give it about 20 years, and all those photographs suddenly become much more valuable than when they were originally taken. So does anybody know who that is? No, I mean the one in the middle. <laughs> Actually, I look like Matt Lucas, don't I? Don't you think? <laughs> it's really worrying. I don't remember that dog either, which is even more worrying. Um, that's probably why I'm reaching for my gun. Uh, <laughs> but uh, David Bowie in that picture were the same because we're fashionable. Give it 20 years and we come back again. I'm talking about his trousers more than his skill. He's always fashionable. So what we've got to try and do here is mine the 20-year gap. Okay? How are we going to do it? Well. Why don't we treat photographs like fine wine? Why don't we lay them down to enjoy later in life? It's a mindset to do this. It's not a case of let's get some kind of bit of software. There's loads of software available. It's a mindset that we've got to start doing this yesterday to make sure that we've got these photographs. It's, it's not a case of me talking about nostalgia here. I'm talking about 2040 when you're trying to find your photographs and you can't. OK, we've got to start laying them down. At Chelsea, we do this by running an archive, which is available to everybody online. You can't do that. You could, but it's extremely labor-intensive. So things to look at are put them into book form. Make them physical. Photographs don't exist at the moment, digital photographs. They're just ones and zeros. They only become photographs when a program makes them into a picture. So make them into pictures now, before it's too late. Make them into books. Make them into photographs on prints on the wall. And why are we doing all this? Because our past is important. I took some photographs of something that happened to me a few years ago. I love the NHS. I've had five hip operations, and they're wonderful people, but one went wrong, just one of those things. And I spent eight months on crutches. And halfway through, I started photographing my experiences because I wanted to capture them for all time. And now I look at this book that I produced. No one else has seen this. It's just, it's just for me at home. I can look at this and know where I've come from. I know that I've come through something. And I know that somebody that looked after me so beautifully during that period is very, very important to me. It's what they did for me as well. So. This photographic history of mine helps me to understand who I am now and give me, give me confidence in who I am going forward. A few weeks ago, I found this photograph of my grandmother. And do you know what? I'd forgotten what she looked like. I, I sort of remember vaguely what she looked like, but I'd forgotten what nobility she had in her features and what a marvelous-looking lady she is. And I love photography for that. And this is me and my brother 
putting on our best faces for, for, for the cameras on holiday. And my brother died of motor neuron disease when he was 38. So I love these photographs because some of him still lives today with me. So folks, look after your pictures. Start putting aside the best ones every day. Move them from your smartphone to your computer, then into a folder. Every time you take pictures, put 2018 on that folder. Start doing it, and then in 2040, you'll know where to find them. God bless you. Thank you very much indeed.